Welcome everyone to Azing News and with me, Julia. Australian Ambassador and European Union Delegation met with Shanana Guzmão. Recently, the Ambassador of Australia, Bill Costello, accompanied by the Defence Attaché and the Advisor, Bonnie Hoffman, met with Karel Shanana Guzmão in order to discuss how they continue to support Timor-Leste in various fields. Shanana Guzman also holds a meeting with the head of European Union delegation, Mark Fiedrich, who visited Timor-Leste and he had expressed the willingness to continue to support Timor-Leste next year. The commitment to continue to support Timor-Leste in various fields, like both countries have recently done, I've seen and accompanied as well, that Australia never forsake its willingness to continue support in various areas. It's an informal meeting, and to find out that Australia never forget Timor-Leste and continue to support Timor-Leste, as well as the European Union will assist Timor-Leste in several areas, which they are currently doing and will continue to do so. We appreciate their friendship, cooperation, support, and all the assistance from the European Union as well. Australia and the European Union have committed to continue to support Timor-Leste in any issue. Meanwhile, the European Union ambassador had vowed to provide the technical support for Timor-Leste's parliamentary election this year. Thailand dissolved parliament for election. Thailand dissolved its parliament on Monday, March 20, to clear the way for an election in May, a vote set to reignite a long-running power struggle between a military-backed establishment and a political movement that has dominated elections for two decades. No election date has been announced, but sources said the vote will take place on May 14. Pai Tong Tarng Shinawatra, the daughter and niece respectively of ousted former premiers Thaksin and Nyung Luk Shinawatra, is the front-runner to be Prime Minister in Opinion Service, with her support jumping 10 points to 32.2% in a poll released at the weekend. The poll by the National Institute of Development Administration put Prime Minister Prayu chan who has been in power since 2014 coup, against the Pyo Thai government in third place with 15.65%. Rising inflation has decreased people's passion ahead of the Eid al Fitr holiday. As Indonesians prepare to shop for new clothes and food for the upcoming holy month of Ramadan, rising inflation has put a dampener on people's spirit in the lead up to the Eid al Fitr festival. According to the latest central bank data, Indonesia's consumer price index has accelerated to 5.47% in February this year, compared to 2.64% in March last year, during the then Ramadan month. We used to be able to prepare food for two days, now we can only do day by day, because prices for chicken are soaring, every food price is also soaring. I'm hoping that everything can go back to normal because prices had gone up three times. The rising prices were keenly felt by shoppers thronging at wet market in Jakarta, looking for the cheapest fish, meat and vegetables ahead of the fasting month of Ramadan. According to the central bank governor, this year, prices of food, mainly rice and cooking oil, again rose in most provinces in the past month, and they are expected to rise further in coming weeks due to high demand. <laughs> it's far different compared to normal days, as we are hoping for more sales of dates during Umrah season, Hajj season, and Ramadan. Normal days is just standard, but during Hajj and Umrah season, there is a very high demand. <laughs> Chief Economic Minister Erlang Hartarto said to help Indonesians deal with inflation worsened by expected dry weather and dropped in food output and the government will provide social assistance by distributing rice, eggs and chicken during Ramadan. United States and Philippines will announce new enhanced defense cooperation agreement sites.
The United States official said the United States and Philippines will announce new sites as soon as possible for an expanded enhanced defense cooperation agreement, which gives the Western power access to military bases in the Southeast Asian country. U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall spoke after meeting Philippines Defense Chief Carlito Galvez at the Basa Air Base in Pampanga North of the capital, where they led a groundbreaking ceremony for the rehabilitation of the base's runway. Today's event is a physical manifestation of our enhanced defense cooperation agreement, a key pillar of the U.S.-Philippine alliance. It builds on our mutual defense treaty that applies anywhere in the South China Sea or the West Philippine Sea. As Secretary Austin noted in his trip here last month, our alliance makes both of our democracies more secure and helps uphold a free and open Indo-Pacific. The One Defense AEP team looks forward to the timely completion of all ECA projects, considering that those facilities would greatly help the armed force of the Philippines boots its capability to ensure the country's defense. Most importantly, the facilities would contribute to the national effort in securing our country's sovereignty and territorial integrity, particularly in our maritime domain awareness campaign. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. last month granted the United States access to four military bases on top of five existing locations under the 2014 ETCA agreement. The rehabilitation of the runway is part of the 82 million US dollar that the United States has allocated toward infrastructure investments at the existing five ETCA sites. United States warship docks in Philippines for goodwill visit. A United States amphibious assault warship docked in Manila for a four-day goodwill visit to the Philippines. USS America commanding officer Captain Shoki Snyder said, after passing through the South China Sea on the way to Manila, Chinese vessels were spotted, but that all interactions they had were safe and professional. Uh, our, our official visit is to uh, have some rest and relaxation for the crew to be able to enjoy uh, Manila uh, and the Philippines and to um, show uh, the government and the people of the Philippines that America is their friend and a good partner here. The visit comes months after Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos granted the United States access to four military bases on top of five existing locations under the 2014 ETCA agreement. The Philippines, a U.S. treaty ally, is locked in a territorial dispute with China and five other countries over islands in the oil-rich South China Sea. At least 600 households in Thailand affected by high winds and hail. According to the Chiang Mai Disaster Prevention and Mitigation Department, a storm battered northern Thailand affecting almost 600 households in Chiang Mai. <laughs> Chai Chai Wong Kam, a Chiang Mai resident, said, At the beginning there was a mild wind, but 10 minutes later it turned out into a gale and heavy rain. Then the hail started to continue for more than 20 minutes, knocking down trees and damaging buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Thai Prime Minister Payu chan Ocha ordered all relevant ministers to help people in Chiang Mai hit by the adverse weather. Filipino Tabuena wins Delhi Golf Club Open. Miguel Tabuena of the Philippines won the DGC Open on Sunday, March 19, to clinch his third Asian Tour title. Tabuena overcame a six-shot deficit in the final round to take the victory, which added to his titles from the 2018 Queen's Cup and 2015 Philippine Open. I feel great. Um, I've, I've been playing well, uh, very well for the past few months, and, and I really believe that, that, that a win was coming very soon. Um, I told myself, you know, just... Just stick, just just stick to your game plan. You know, um, you've you've been playing awesome the the first three days. Um, what well, what is the reason to to switch it up? Um, it, it's it's very very easy to to get aggressive in in in, in Delhi golf, and I was very very happy with with how me and Clayton stuck to our game plan. Um, and yeah, I I executed each shot. Um, the way I wanted it to. 
and yeah, it's 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 hard to describe. Um, it's it's great to be back in the winner's circle, and um, I really believe that that there's way way more room for improvement still. Playing the challenging Lodi course at the Delhi Golf Club, Tabuena posted a 7 under par 65 to finish on 12 under par, one shot ahead of India's Rashid Khan. Khan was leading with 11 under par going into the final round and had been hoping for his first Asian Tour win in a decade. However, he showed the par 72 in the final round to end the Open in second place. In third was Thailand's Chapchai Nirat, who shot a 4 under par 68 in the final round to finish 10 under. Vetemsi's seven towns of ivory smile from Angola. The government said Vietnamese authorities seized seven tons of ivory smuggled from Angola, the largest seizure of wildlife products in years. Trade in ivory is illegal in Vietnam, but wildlife trafficking remains widespread. Other items often found smuggled into the country include pangolin scales, rhino horns, and tiger carcasses. The government in a statement said customs authorities in Haipon City on Monday found the ivory hidden in a container declared to customs as peanuts, adding that the cargo had transited via Singapore. This followed the finding of more than 600 kilograms of African ivory last month at the city's Lakhuyan port. Last month, a court in Vietnam sentenced a man to 13 years in prison for trafficking nearly 10 tons of endangered animal parts from Africa, including ivory and rhino horns. The government said on Monday it continued to investigate the case. Zelensky says will join G7 summit offered Ukraine peace plan to China. Japan's Fumio Kishida met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv during a rare and announced visit by a Japanese leader that underscores Tokyo's emphatic support for Ukraine in its fight against Russia's invasion. The Japanese Prime Minister had been the only leader of the group of seven nations who had not visited Ukraine, which has seen an outpouring of popular support in Japan following the Russian invasion more than a year ago. Zelensky said in a joint news conference with Kishida that he will join an upcoming G summit in Japan via an online link, following an invitation from the Japanese Prime Minister. Zelensky said Kiev had suggested to China that Beijing join a Ukrainian peace formula to end Russia's war in Ukraine, but that it was still waiting for an answer. Tokyo has continually voiced support for Ukraine and joined rounds of sanctions against Russia. Thank you everyone for today. We will see you again. Have a nice weekend. Bye.